Hello, and welcome to another edition of Inventor's Quick Tips. In this episode, we are looking at the upgraded U.S. Patent and Trademark Office Search Tool, which was rolled out in the fall of 2022, and it replaces the antiquated Web 1.0 tool that is something the USPTO had been using for over 20 years. In the past, they had this clunky UI with two separate areas, one for searching patents 1976 and newer, and one for patent applications 2001 and newer. The Patent Office didn't try to make it this clunky, it just kind of evolved that way, but now it's updated, and let's take a quick cursory look at the features. Note that in this video, I'm covering some of the features of the new search interface, but I'm not really going into strategy on how to search. I have a video that discusses more details on how to search, and I will put a link to that video in the description. Okay, so now let's take a look at what's new here. Now we have three databases we can simultaneously search. By default, all three are checked. The top box is U.S. Patent Applications 2001 and newer. The middle checkbox is U.S. Issued Patents 1976 and newer. And the bottom box is the OCR, or Optical Character Recognition Database. These are older patents pre-1976. With this new search tool, we can search all of those with a single search query. We can specify a default Boolean operator for when we have multiple search terms. And I will be going through some examples of using different Boolean operators. We also have the feature of British equivalents, and this is a new feature for the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, as far as I know, and it is checked by default. So if you want to search for color tires, with that checkbox checked, you can also pick up references for color tires, the way our good friends across the pond might spell it. Of course, here we are only searching U.S. patents and applications, so most will use the American spelling, but some applications might use British spellings, especially if they were based on an application that was first filed in Great Britain. So this is a nice feature to have. So let's do a search for razor blade and see what happens. We do that and we get 1.3 million results of references that contain razor or blade somewhere in the application. This is a lot more than we can realistically go through, so we'll show some ways to focus that list and cut down on the search results. But first, let's turn our attention to the Document Viewer. The Document Viewer tab on the right shows the first document in the list, and you can use the buttons on the toolbar at the top to scroll through the documents. For each document you view, it will highlight the terms that we searched for in the text section. Now let's do the same search, but change that default operator to AND. Now we've gone from 1.3 million results down to 41,000 results, because now we only see documents that have the word razor and the word blade in them. Here is another operator. ADJ stands for adjacent. This specifies that the words must be touching one after the other and in this particular order, razor followed by blade. So, these references look specifically for the phrase razor followed by blade. And now we've gone from 41,000 references down to 32,000 results. Here is another operator called near. Near is similar to adjacent, but a little more broad in that the words can be in any order. And now that we do this, we have slightly more results. We went up from 32,000 to 32,800 results because with the, the uh, operator near, the terms can be in any order. We also have an operator called same. This identifies documents that have both terms in the same paragraph. And with this operator, we get about 38,000 results. So you can see that these operators can really help cut down on the number of references. However, even though in our example we have cut down from 1.3 million references to a set that is less than 40,000, it is still too many documents to be practical. How can we focus the search more? By focusing on specific parts, such as the abstract or title. 
Limiting search terms to the abstract is a good way to reduce the list while still returning relevant search results. How do we search by application part? The USPTO uses suffixes on the search terms and the suffix can specify where within the document the search will take place. So let's say we have this term radar. We can add a period after the term to have it search in a particular area. The AB after the period tells the system to limit the search of the word radar to the abstract of the patents and patent applications. Here are some specialty searches. This table gives you ways to search using a suffix. So as you can see, there are many ways to search, including searching by date, by patent classification, inventor name, and a host of others. You can freeze this frame to take a look, but this information came from the U.S. Patent Office website, so you can also find it there. Finally, I will show you some Boolean operators. We already covered AND and OR, and they also have NOT. So in, the, in that case, if we did razor not blade, going back to our previous example, that would give us references that had the word razor but did not have the word blade, which I guess could be handy feature to have in some circumstances. They also have an exclusive OR feature, the XOR feature. I can't really see myself using that operator for the kinds of searching that I typically do, but it's there. So there is a cursory overview of some of the highlights of the new features of searching at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Note that other third-party sites have had features like this for many years, but the U.S. Patent Office is finally catching up. And one advantage to searching at the USPTO website is that it is the authority for U.S. patents and patent applications. While it is very common to use other sites such as Google Patents, and Google Patents is a great free service to have. In my experience, I have found on a few occasions that it did not have a particular patent in its database. It could have been a batch processing error, or who knows, but I have seen that. Also, the US PTO website is up to the minute. I have seen cases with third-party sites where new references that just came out say within the past day or two, may not show up in some of these. So no matter how you search, it's always a good idea to include the U.S. Patent Office website as part of your search strategy, at a minimum, to make sure you are searching everything that is available to you. Again, with this video, we just scratched the surface. There are more advanced features you can dig into if you want to learn more. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you again for watching.